Insular dwarfism, also known as island dwarfism, occurs in mammals for the most part, in human beings and let's say elephants. In reptiles, this has the opposite effect. But in mammals, when they're placed on a, let's say a smaller island, a smaller environment than what they're used to, their bodies, their minds, their appetites, everything shrinks. It's a kind of dwarfism. This just goes to show you how much power the mind does have, how much your environment and then the mind's perception of it has on even the physical body. This is interesting because, like I mentioned, it, it has the opposite effect on, let's say, a reptile, like a lizard. If you put a lizard on an island, it'll, it'll get larger. But with elephants and even humans, there was a human called Flores Man. It was actually from the Flores Island. He was about three foot tall, if I remember correctly. So he was just a smaller human being, not like what you would call a midget, just a dwarf. And it had much to do with him being on the island. He's a mammal. So the size of his body, his appetite, and everything changed. And this isn't to make fun of anybody, but this is just to show you how fascinating nature can be, the human mind can be. Because this limitation can't just be on the body, right? It's also in your mind, your perception. If you have a small view of yourself, you're going to have a very small experience, right? And it just goes to show you what you believe you become in that way, right? So, of course, we could say it's nature adapting to the island, but I don't know. Perception has a lot to do with it, right? I mean, even from a scientific perspective, we find that when you observe reality, it acts like a particle, but when you're not looking at it, it acts like a wave. And I would say that that wave is just all possibilities, right? And then when you're observing it, you make it, you conceptualize it as you wish, right? 